Okay, so here we are in flight and I would like to show you rudder input in flight and again you can see the side load from the um, from the center of gravity and then under motion platform stats the white line you will see acceleration in x direction these are the accelerations measured in the cockpit so if i step on the right rudder this is what you see and of course there's an induced roll and now it's neutral rudder and it's left rudder and an induced roll and neutral rudder now let's pause this Zack. Uh, let's pause this. Here we are. <laughs> so um, you can see, or maybe I can make it visible. Ah, oh, there it are oh, very hard. Oh, damn it. Here we are. So first there was right rudder. And as you can see, the center of gravity experienced an acceleration towards the right. And then it, it got an acceleration towards the left. So if I step on the right rudder, it generates an acceleration towards the left. Um, just like in a right turn, stuff in your car is being thrown over to the left. So first, the, the, the CG goes into the opposite direction, the adverse direction, and then in the proverse direction. While the cockpit is exactly opposite. It goes, because of it's ahead of the center of gravity, it goes in the right direction immediately with a big spike, and then kind of stabilizes there until they both reach an equilibrium of forces. And then when I let go of the rudder back to neutral, again, the cockpit makes a huge, this time an adverse spike, whereas the, the center of gravity makes a proverse sp a spike because the, the side load from the vertical fin is no longer present. And therefore the lift that the, the lateral lift that the, the fuselage generates will kick in. And that is this little bump here. And eventually they reach an equilibrium. And this is the same for the other direction. So you can see the cockpit makes spikes and the CG makes spikes. That is normal. It's got something to do with the, um, the on ground, you rotate around a, a line on the main gear and in flight you rotate around basically the it's not really the center of gravity it's the center of all forces so this is where this effect comes from and i'm going to unpause it and i'm going to show you something really interesting if you move the rudder left and right um, a little more then you will see something that is kind of that should be shocking to you like if i give it a little input uh, left right left right take a look at this left right left right left right uh, sorry right right, left, right, left. I actually confuse left and right. So pause this again. And this should be very troubling to you. If you don't see it already, I'm going to show you. Um, the cockpit has accelerations in one direction while the CG goes in the other direction. So what you see here is that if you use oscillating rudder, which you should, but every now and then you do, you give a couple of rudder inputs, um, you have the accelerations that come from the motion data stream from the CG are opposite to the ones coming from the cockpit, as you can see here and here and here. So what this is, this is not just false cueing, like what you should avoid. This is adverse cueing. This is what I described as the graveyard region in this diagram. If you use the blue stream to indicate accelerations from the vehicle, but you experience the white one, then you will not only have an, a false cues, you will be experiencing cues that are exactly the opposite of what is happening. And of course, I can show you the same thing for the vertical um, axis as well. And I'm going to show you a little bit of roll inputs if you want to. Here's it. And if I um, move the roll left and right, that will induce a yaw because of adverse yaw effects. And it will be the same thing. If I do this, take a look here. It's not as pronounced. This is just the side effects of the aileron being deflected. And if I zoom in, it's not as pronounced. And it's not a 180 degree shift. It's about a 90 degree shift between CG accelerometer data and cockpit accelerometer data. So even though this peak and this peak is on the same side for most of the time, it's 90 degrees in phase shifted. So you will experience something that in reality, the pilot will not experience. So I hope this, uh, I hope I brought the point across. It's worth considering. Oh, and then one more thing. Um, if it's, it, it depends on two factors, the distance from the CG and the angular rates and acceleration. And so it doesn't matter in a go-kart or a car, distances are just too small. And it also doesn't matter in like cruise ships or aircraft carriers because the angular rates and angular accelerations are just too small. But in between, you have these big vehicles that have high, relatively high angular accelerations and rates. It does matter a lot. And an airliner is pretty much just in between um, a go-kart <laughs> and a cruise ship. So 
I hope you enjoyed this, and um, if you have any interesting points, um, I'd be happy to take a look at them.